Today we got the four saxophone horsemen of the apocalypse, ladies and gentlemen. When we as professional saxophone players talk about the best saxophones, we are generally talking about those made by Selmer, Yamaha, Yanagisawa, and Kyleworth. And I tried to pick what I feel are the best or the most expensive from those companies to really put them through the test and see what I think about them. All right, everybody, so today we got the Alto Sax Showdown. I'm gonna do this video pretty much exactly the way I did the tenor video. Keep in mind, this is a demo and not a review. I don't actually have these in my possession to try for a few days. This is just me sliding up to the local music store, playing through these horns, and seeing what's what. Quick disclaimer, I am not paid or endorsed by any of these companies, but I do have an affiliate link with Woodwind and Brasswind and Amazon for that matter. So I get a commission if you use my link below. So a couple things I wanna emphasize is that I'm gonna leave in the note flubs and squeaks and mess ups and all that kind of stuff because it gives you a much more natural impression of what happens. We're used to playing our own stuff a certain way. So when we get new stuff, you know, we get challenged with these little differences and whatnot. So I'm gonna leave all of that stuff in. At the end of this video, I'm gonna rank these from my least favorite to my most favorite, which one I would get, which one I'd let a sugar mama buy me. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> uh, most importantly, I'm gonna talk about why I like one instrument over another. Maybe you play one of these and it's the greatest thing ever for you, but for me, obviously my experience is gonna be different from yours. Uh, I am using this in a pretty limited space room, so it's not the, it's not professional level recording audio quality, so. All right, let's do it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so sorry about this light here. See if I can adjust that a little bit better. That's about as good as that's gonna get. So here is the Selmer Reference 54 Alto and Matte Finish. Let's hear what we got. particularly cared much for this finish but today this is extremely nice we have plastic resonators here one thing I am noticing is that with the keys I'm getting this type of vibrational transfer through the saxophone if you like this kind of stuff ladies and gentlemen you can buy me a piece of cake it's like a kickstarter patreon type of thing make a donation that helps the channel grow you can also share this with everybody that really helps a lot that link will be in the description below if you are interested in purchasing any of these saxophones ladies and gentlemen i will post a link below you can pick those up through woodwind brasswind okay ladies and gentlemen next up we got the julius kyleworth this is not the shadow this is the sx 90r the key layout on this is considerably different. So historically, everybody has essentially copied Selmer. <laughs> but this definitely seems like a departure. And also a nice advancement are these palm keys. How you can adjust them yourself. And also there's a mechanism for the G sharp to stop it from sticking, which is here. We have this really large bell that's here. So let's give this thing a whirl. This is a black nickel. Mm -hmm. 
It's nice and warm, big sound. I think I definitely I'm liking this more than the summer. benefits of that because it does have just like it really fills the space around you kind of like I am <laughs> okay there is a tiny learning curve just with the key placement but everything is like more compact I'm playing it like it's my Alora a little bit especially up top but this, I'm really, really liking this saxophone. Okay, now I got the Yamaha 82Z2. I'm looking on the horn, and I don't see anywhere where it says 82Z second generation, but that's what it says in the website for this, so... ago I reviewed the 8 the TW01 tenor and I noticed there was a lot of this percussive effect on the E flat and the D this saxophone more than the other two it has this it's there's a lot of vibrational transfer through the saxophone um, it is a very lightweight saxophone but that's something that's kind of putting me off from it although the ease of play is all there Altissimo comes out really nicely. Keep in mind, I'm used to playing my Laura, so I'm trying to play these instruments the way I should play these instruments, but still, I'm going to leave in all the like flubs and misnotes and all of that because this is my demo of me just in the store trying these horns. So uh, I don't know which one comes in first, but this one is coming in third so far. Okay. All right, so I also have my Altissimo book for alto and tenor that's available. I also have my Diminished, All Things Diminished book that's available for saxophone. If you are interested in picking something like that up, I will put a link 
in the description. They are available as a digital purchase only. Okay. Now we got the Yanagisawa. This is the AWO30. This has the silver neck with the silver body, but it has the brass bell. The AWO33 has the silver neck, silver bell with the brass body. So let's see what Yanagisawa has to say about all of this. This saxophone is amazing. It really truly is. I'm looking through. We have metal resonators. This one I think is probably the best at tempering the vibrational transfer when you press the keys and feeling all the vibrations through the saxophone. And also I think it's the best at not having that E flat and D pop out. The low end on this thing is freakishly well balanced. It's really good. Um, somewhere between this one and the uh, the Kyleworth, these two are absolutely spectacular. I just missed the Shadow uh, Kyleworth by like three days. It sold, so I didn't get a chance to try that one. Okay, uh, let me play this a little bit more. <laughs> So I don't know why people try to compare instruments like this to really inexpensive saxophones. I mean, just the fit and finish, the quality control. It's just, it's absolutely amazing. Okay, uh, let me try the uh, the Kyleworth again just to get it back to back. Okay, and here's the Kyleworth one more time. <laughs> Okay, let me do a recap of all of this and I'll tell you what I think about everything. Cool. Okay, to my surprise, ladies and gentlemen, coming in at fourth place was the Yamaha. This is the 82Z, the second generation. I had a really difficult time finding anything that differentiates this one from the uh, 82Z first generation. I didn't know if there was gonna be something on the horn or not. I'm having trouble finding stuff online. Um, this is what the music store labeled it as, so we're gonna go with that. But at any rate, in the company of these other instruments, it just did not feel special. It felt like I should go ahead and get maybe one of the less expensive Yamahas. Around the saxophone campfire, this is Yamaha's problem. Their intermediate instruments 
are really, really good. So it makes it difficult to justify spending that extra amount of money on one of their higher priced saxophones. This is the complete opposite that I got from playing the tenor 82Z. That thing was amazing. It's definitely on my list of potential saxophones to replace my cannonball with. But in this case, I mean, listening back to it, the thing sounds amazing. I noticed that there's a certain kind of brightness that's in the sound that it cut through a little better than some of the other instruments. I'm not really looking for a bright, edgy sound when it comes to alto, but it's nice to have it. It's a beautiful sounding saxophone, but in this company, definitely coming in in fourth place. All right, coming in at third, ladies and gentlemen, was the Reference 54. It's a really good saxophone, didn't do anything wrong. I didn't notice anything particularly out of place in that regard, but it was just up against some really, really good competition. That is the only reason why it's third in this case. If I was going to get one, which I still might seriously do that, I basically want to get one with the regular lacquer and put it in the vault because Selmer doesn't make them anymore. And how much money you are investing in saxophones as a saxophone player is going to be crucial for you to be able to get the next step up saxophone because maybe they come out with the Supreme 2 or something like this, and you have like a high quality instrument that you can use to trade or sell and get you something else. So there you go. Coming in at number two, ladies and gentlemen, and this was pretty tough until I went back and played both of them back to back. But coming in at number two was the Kyleworth. Instrument was just absolutely spectacular. Just fantastic. I really, really like the key work. I feel like it's a nice departure from the Selmer tradition that everybody's pretty much stolen from Selmer, so to speak. But the thing just laid really nicely, had a really nice full bodied sound, very rich. It wasn't the paint scraper, blastomatic disaster that everybody generally tends to associate with Kyleworth. But then again, I wasn't really pushing it there. I did a little bit and it was just like, Man, like the biggest impression that I got from it was that it was just full. Like the sound just felt like it was everywhere, but it wasn't like nasty and edgy and that kind of thing. So the only reason why it ranks second is because I just felt like there was something else that was just better, objectively better. Okay, and that leads us to number one, ladies and gentlemen, which is the Yanagasawa AWO 3 zero. So this thing was just absolutely spectacular. One of the things that I noticed a lot in this comparison was how much vibrational transfer was getting transferred through the saxophone and into the mouthpiece. I could feel it a lot when I was playing. Definitely the Yamaha. This is one of the things that really kind of took me back, but it was almost completely non-existent with this Yanagisawa. I guess adding mass to the neck and the body of it really just helped to stabilize that vibration and you can use that energy to convert your read motion into sound instead of using that motion to shake the saxophone. So for me, the technological advancements that they've made with this instrument just absolutely paid off and the instrument was spectacular. And it kind of like playing it back to back versus the Kyleworth it just kind of went a leg up and it was just, it was laughable at this point. You hear me laughing at the end of playing it again. So that's my picks, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, at some point in the future, I am going to replace my Allura. Maybe I'll keep my Allura as a backup horn. It's a really good instrument at the price that I got it for, and I'm super happy with it. But it's not one of the four horsemen of the apocalypse. So that's all I got for you, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for tuning in. See ya!